When we entered 2020, we couldn't have predicted the challenges we were about to face. The audio theater experience was born during this incredible time. It is bound not only to give a much needed escape, its true intention is to keep theater alive, our community together, and be an example that no matter how difficult things get, we can overcome our obstacles and defy them. Our team from all over the world faced the trials of recording their parts remotely with different recording devices, time differences, and language barriers, even though most of them have never met or been in the same room or continent. Our passion, trust, and respect brought us together. So, here we are after thousands of hours of work. These prodigious actors, musicians, voice talents, and creative staff are honored to present Delusion. The stage seems to be a dark, empty void. Lights fade in on a man, standing with his back to the audience. Several iconic black and white pictures of Houdini begin to appear projected on the walls. The faceless man gazes at the pictures with great curiosity. Then, two armchairs materialize, facing each other, and a solitary door emerges before the man. He takes a step back. The door starts slowly spinning in a full turn, revealing both sides of it. When it stops, out of nowhere, a woman in a white suit walks through the door and greets the man. He turns around, and we finally see it's Harry Houdini. They sit down. It's an honor to have you tonight. <laughs> I was always intrigued by the idea of being your guest one day. <laughs> well, it's long overdue. Ladies and gentlemen, there's no one who doesn't know the great Harry Houdini. But what people are dying to know is, who is Eric Weiss? Ever had the notion you have been somewhere before? Eric is a dreamer, an idealist, someone who dares to take the first step. He takes the punches, then gets right back up. Take a step beyond your comprehension. Are you afraid of death? There are three types of death. The first is the moment you realize you will die. The second is when you physically do die. And the third? Well, the third scares me the most. Do you think life could have turned out differently? Once Theo told me, we always have a choice. But something in me would never have let me take another direction. So what is the most exciting thing for you about magic? Nothing's what it seems. Would you care to elaborate on that? How about I show you? They exit through the solitary door, which begins to spin again, revealing they've mysteriously disappeared. Shh! Don't make a sound. Don't turn around. Don't turn around. Shh! We've begun. Ready or not?
Da Vinci He defies our expectation A Freemason whose interests range from film to aviation Brother, son, and husband, man of myth and untold mystery The man behind the story jacket continues making history Sacrifice, I've given my all What's it amount to? Just look around you I say it's been worth it Just to astound you Chapter 1 Samuel Scene 1 Appleton, Wisconsin, 1892 At the Weiss family's small, poorly furnished apartment Young Eric and his brother Theo are in the middle of an exciting conversation Samuel, the boy's sickly father, enters (coughs) Cecilia, that's my medicine Dad, you're up? (coughs) My boys, have you seen my medicine? <laughs> Which one? I, I guess the one I take to remember the other ones. You look better. Uh, praying helps, and with Hashem's will. Unable to speak for a moment, uh, Samuel massages his throat. Will you pour me a little sip of whiskey? Dad! Samuel winks at him. Makes my pills go down smoother. <laughs> Oh, my pills, here they are. Theo reluctantly pours him a glass. So, what have you been up to? We were... Nothing. We worked the theater corner today and brought home some change. We figured, since, you know... Huh. Who would fire a rabbi? Only in America. This country is too young to understand and too stubborn to learn from the old world. Yes, yes Dad. Dad. What good's the future without knowing your past? At least I can rest assured that you will follow the right path. Of course, Dad. To the table! Cecilia, the boy's loving mother, enters and brings dinner to the table. Samuel. Cecilia sees the whiskey in Samuel's hand. L'chaim. Age to perfection. Like your lovely mother. What's for dinner? Potato stew with carrots. Your favorite. Ugh. Again? Again? The Weiss family sits down for dinner. The boys are eager to eat, but Samuel interrupts them. First, we pray. Eric wants to do magic. Dash! 
magic. Yes, he's learning card tricks. There shall not be found among you one who interprets omens or a sorcerer, for whoever does these things is an abomination to Hashem. See, even the Torah admits the concept of magic. And prohibits it. I knew you would say that. It is falsehood and lies. It is not fitting for wise Jews to be drawn into such emptiness. I want to be a magician. What's wrong with that? Honey. Don't be ridiculous. Be a doctor or serve Hashem, but you must grow up. Soon I'll be gone. Samuel. <sighs> this family is going to be your responsibility. Then I get to decide what's best. Eric. There's no doubt in mind, dear boy, that Hashem gave you a wildly curious mind. But you will follow my example. Samuel. Oy. Look around. How has your example served us? I've raised my children, loved my wife. Honored my Hashem and lived my life with dignity. But Dad, I... Uh, I need to lie down. Theo, help me to the bed, will you? Theo helps Samuel up and they exit. Cecilia begins to clean the table. Eric, you know he means well. She moves toward the door but doesn't leave. She lingers, watching Eric. We hear the voices of the interviewer and Eric. Clearly, you're a passionate person. Do you recall what event had the most significant impact on you? We were poor. In a small, boring town, we didn't have much perspective. But here's the thing. We don't achieve great things when we're cozy and happy. It makes us tremendously determined when we aren't. Hearing trains pass from our room here Always dreaming I'd disappear I'd sneak up to the rooftop Try to count the stars And dream against a backdrop of Jupiter and Mars. It may be crazy, but I tell myself it one day could be ours if I left it all for a one-way ticket. My one-way ticket. It takes patience to build a train line. And lots of time But suddenly the waiting Starts weighing on my heart My blood's accelerating I'm praying to depart Why should I waste time debating When and where my life will start It begins when I buy My one-way ticket Grab your suitcase, step onto the track And I'm never looking back The fields whiz by, the past is through The whistle blows and I'm starting anew The window fogs up from my breath on the glass Catching a glimpse of each wonder we pass Taking off, I'm ready for flight But I'm afraid I'll never reach that height If I stay here Will I one day Wonder why I let my whole life just pass me by While worried over getting a steady nine to five And constantly regretting, forgetting all my drive Letting someone else define the way that I should feel alive I refuse to die before I finally buy my one-way ticket. Flashback. <gasps> Let's play hide and seek. Okay, you hide. I'll. 
I'll count. 20, 19, 18, 10, 9, Chapter 2 Theo Scene 2 Young Eric and Theo are lying in bed in their modest bedroom. Psst. Hey! Eric! What? I'm sorry. You promised you'd keep her secret. I know! Night Dash. Can I still be your partner in crime? Theo gets up and goes over to Eric's bed. He sits on the bed. Go to sleep. Please, I, I told you I'm sorry. Gotcha! <laughs> Suddenly, Eric bursts out from the closet behind Theo and playfully hits him with a pillow. It, it wasn't funny. I feel like I let you down. Well, you did. But I figured Dad would hate it anyway. At least he knows now. So, you're not angry? I'm too busy to be angry. Here, I want to show you something. Eric reveals a book he has hidden under the desk. Meet Jean Eugène Robert Houdin, the master of magic. They say the world has never seen illusions like this. It's too dark, I can't see anything. Just listen. There's more than just card tricks. He can make things disappear in plain sight and levitate. He says there's a logic to magic. Actually, I developed a trick. And I showed it to a theater owner. That's why you insisted on working near the theater this morning. You snuck off. Well, they kicked me out pretty fast. I still feel it on my butt. W what did they say? We would rather watch a faucet leaking for two hours than your tricks for two minutes. And I left out the cursing. What did you do? Just a simple trick. Eric casually performs a trick in which sparks appear to fly out of his hand. Whoa! Well, that's what I thought, too. Uh, do it again! No. Teach me. You sure you're ready? Ready as ever. All right, then. But we need to come up with something that people haven't seen yet. People will tell you it's all been done. They say there's nothing new under the sun. But I just can't believe it. That view has no appeal. No, we're never gonna make it by reinventing the wheel. Think outside the handcuffs. Think inside the box. <sighs> Think of something. danger we could raise the stakes like swallowing some needles hot coals or whatever it takes lock yourself in prison or even levitate up to something something different i can see our name up in lights our phrases would be sung although my name for instead of ice Quite full off the tongue. True and Eric Weiss doesn't really pop. I've done the king of cards. How about says she the great? No, and Eric Prince of the air. Well, that one flopped. <laughs> Let's forget them and start fresh with a nice clean slate. Hey, 
What are you thinking? Say what it is on three. And we'll kiss this life goodbye We'll first escape the shithole Our limits way up in the sky We'll make it work together The world will know our name Give them something Something different Something different Something different Blackout we hear the voices of the interviewer and Eric. How many hours would you practice a day? It really depends. I'd say nine to ten on average. Yeah, a lot. Scene three. A middle-aged masculine madam sits in her office smoking a cigar. She's a theater owner. Eric and Theo enter. Eric is bound with ropes restraining his body, arms and wrists. You got two minutes. Good day, madam. Uh, I'm Harry Houdini. This is my brother Dash, and together we are the Brothers Houdini. Uh, we guarantee you've never seen anything like this. Eric attempts to escape with no success. It seems painful. Theo steps forward. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh. Okay, uh, madame, we've been working on some tricks of our own, and we were hoping to perform them at your theater. I'd like to offer 50% of the profit we make, and- Is that a joke? I run a 750-seat theater, and you're pitching me this? Listen up, Harold. It's Harry, madame. Trust me. I'm doing you a huge favor here when I tell you you should consider doing something else. They start to leave, feeling dejected. We need to find you a better act, kids. We can work harder, sir. Uh, madam? Listen, I can't offer you my stage. But I can introduce you to some people. Maybe you'll learn a thing or two. Yes! You in? Yes! To make it in this business, man, you've got to find your niche then get it nice and spicy to present the perfect pitch practice and hard work of course are part of the equation but simply not enough to get that deafening ovation forget your social graces just cover all your bases go figure out what people want and throw it in their faces take some notes kids jesus for example greatest showman you could choose but no one gave a hoot till he turned water into booze. Edison, well, nobody cared until he gave them light. Van Gogh lived in obscurity till he painted Starry Night. So tighten up your laces, get ready for the races. Go figure out what people want and throw it in their faces. Listen up, kids, you've got potential. Tell you the truth. Spark in your eyes tells me your mental wet is essential. If you make it somehow, I won't be surprised. People go to the theater because they want to escape their boring lives. It's not about the trick, but the way you sell it.
could write a treatise on Robert Houdin's biography, become the leading expert on paper chromatography. But if you want to capture the public's imagination, give them an exciting yet relatable vacation, put them in their places, and you'll hold all the aces. Go figure out what people want and throw it in their faces. Tighten up your laces, get ready for the races. Go Get it now. Scene 4. The scene transforms into a burlesque bar in Coney Island. Years have passed. A marquee light bulb sign reads, The Stinky Fox. In the back, we see three feminine silhouettes belonging to the Floral Sisters, the hot burlesque act of the evening. Eric and Theo, who are now well-dressed gentlemen, watch the show from a table. That's her, Eric. Her? Yes. The beautiful Bess. Oh, that's her. I really like her. I mean, I should probably ask her out, right? She's incredibly smart and and, and beautiful. Then Mazel Tov, I'm happy for you. How about you? Oh, no. You know me. I'm happy with work. Oh, come on. You should relax. We can't get distracted. We've got to be thinking ahead. Better illusions, riskier tricks, world tours, and... (laughs) Man, we've made it to the stinky fox, and you always want more and more. Luckily, I have such a wonderful partner and manager. Dash. Actually, I've been using Theo lately. It sounds stronger and, you know, cooler. Dash sounds dashing. Moving on. (laughs) So I've been thinking of the coffin escape. No, 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 no. Straight jacket... Large chunks, chains, fine, but that trauma again? We were kids, I can handle it now. I'm talking about me, I can't. But I got an idea how to boost our career. She's coming. What? Bess, the lead singer of the Floral Sisters, approaches their table. Um, pretend I said something funny. Um, talk about things. Things? (laughs) We are uh, talking about things. Theo becomes nervous and accidentally spills the whole drink on himself. Are you kidding me? Blackout. Flash forward. Scene five. A few months later. In a dressing room, Theo's waiting for Eric to begin their press conference, announcing the Brothers Houdini tour. Theo was on the phone. Are you kidding me? We're the Brothers Houdini. We've performed at the Stinky Fox more than... We don't need you. It's either 70% of the door or... Hello? Hello? Rude. He dials another number. His mother, Cecilia, enters. John, my man. Listen, we finally had a spot open on our schedule. Yeah? Great, three o'clock then. Oh, by the way... 60% as previously agreed. (laughs) You too. Bye. Theo starts to scribble notes on a notepad, struggling through administrative work. You're quite a shrewd businessman. Why don't you take a break, sweetheart? Maybe later. Where's Eric? The press will eat me alive without him. I'm sure he's on his way. So, how long is this tour going to be? A couple of weeks. Well, when you're back, would you please fix the bathroom's door? It's been squeaking. Sure. I assume my brother is too busy now? He is in the honeymoon phase. I don't want to bother him. So if I start dating, you'll leave me alone too? Sorry. That's not what I meant. Theo. I'll be fine. At least when they arrive, can you... Hey? She's coming too? Bess is your family now. I know, Ma. It's just that... Hashem doesn't always give you what you want. When you want it. Hello, darling. Hello, Cecilia. Mom. (laughs) Hello, Theo. (laughs) Eric gives her a thumbs up for calling him Theo. Bess kisses Theo on the cheek, takes his hand, and twirls herself around. He blushes. 
My family all together in one place. How's my beautiful mother? Ready, Theo. Press is waiting. Ready as ever. Theo and Eric leave the dressing room in a hurry to make it to their press conference. Bess follows. Cecilia remains in the dressing room, calling after them. Break a leg out there! But don't I! My boys need their legs. Bess, Theo, and Eric take the stage in front of the press. Thank you all for coming out. We are excited to announce the Brothers Houdini Tour has been changed to the Houdini's Tour. Everyone please meet the love of my life, our new partner, Bess Houdini. Hello, I'm Bess Ronner. I mean, Houdini. Wait, what? Am I fired? Of course not. We just need a full-time manager and you're so good at it. This was not discussed. Ladies and gentlemen, this might be surprising. At least it was to me. It's the first I've heard this news. Leo, what's wrong with you? Stop being so selfish. Please don't make a scene during press interviews. She's replacing me. She's headlining the show. Have fun learning his tricks. He's special, you know. Did I miss something? You only think about your own ambition So proud like you think you're some magical star It gets so repetitive Eric this, Eric that Oh my god, watch him pull crap from a hat I have more dreams and you know I'm trying to grow There's tricks and inventions I'm dying to show Don't you realize how much your brother loves you? We've got a place for you Selfish. Selfish? I started the whole thing alone. Want to she... wait while you ruin don't all we like work for? Toss me aside for some sweet face in the crowd. I don't want to hate you, then be seen me. as the bad guy. It's we hard keeping quiet together. when you're so, so loud. What about us? What happened to Eric Weiss? That's who Dini to you. This is my show and I won't try to hide it. Look, I know you've always been there by my side. I never kept it a secret that I was the driver and you came along for the ride. I have more dreams and you know I'm trying to grow. There's tricks and inventions I'm dying to show. I've been working so hard trying to achieve it. You don't believe it, but wait and see what I do. From now on, I'll create my own act and be Theo Hardeen. Maybe we'll see you on the scene. We'll look out for your name, Hardeen. You're going out on your own. Me, Hardeen, it's the end of the world. Don't you think this got a bit overblown? If you want to go, then no one's going to stop you doing what's best for you. But don't tear us apart. And much more to show Stuck in his shadow There's nowhere to grow See if you can best me Go ahead and test me Do what you have to do That's what I plan to do And on my own Show's over, folks Theo storms out <sighs> Eric, he's right you started this together, remember? Scene six. Theo! Eric wait. runs after Theo. Theo punches him in the stomach. <clears throat> A moment of tension. Flashback. A few years earlier, lights change and scene shifts to Eric and Theo in their old apartment. Eric collapses. <laughs> A bald, wiry man steps out of the shadows. He's a theater owner. See, I can withstand any blow. Now you do it. What? Come on! Hit me, hit me, hit me, hit me! Hey, Mr. Houdini, I don't know what you're trying to prove here, but I'm running a theater, not a pub. <laughs> you have a good day. But wait! You can't just leave us here. We need this gig! Uh, life isn't easy, son. <clears throat> but his mom sure was. The theater owner punches Eric in the face. Hey, Theo hey, blocks hey, him hey. from punching Eric a second time. <laughs> you're the worst performer I've ever seen! <laughs> Goodbye! That's it. I'm out. Theo, you can't do this. Exactly. I can't. Come on. 
When we started this, we knew we'd have nothing. I want to perform at the Stinky Fox. And we will. One day. And eat a decent meal. Yes, like a, a porterhouse <laughs> steak. At this point, I'd take Mom's old Manischewitz and potato stew. Without paying too much attention to Theo, Eric starts feverishly preparing a trick. Nothing comes for free. W will this ever pay off, though? Persistence and hard work pay off. That's the point of America, right? We're bound to succeed. We just can't stop. Hey, I have a new idea. No, 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 no. We don't have the money for any more tricks. Remember? Food, rent. We're barely surviving here. To Theo's amazement, Eric makes the dollar bill levitate around Theo, teasing him with it. How? How is that even possible? If you stay, I'll show you. I hate you. How do you do that? Do what? Make people believe in what you believe. It's all part of the act. It's all part of the act. Jeez. Eric grabs Theo and gives him a nookie. <laughs> Can you taste that victory around the corner close enough to see? Just a little work and we'll kiss this life goodbye. We'll first escape this shithole. Our limits way up in the sky. We'll make it work together. The world will know our name. Give them something. Young Eric makes the dollar bill disappear in a sparkling flash. Something different. You just burned up money? Really? Well, it's not a perfect trick yet, but hey. What do you say if we spice up our act a bit and try the bullet catch? Are you crazy? I'm not going to shoot you. Let's perfect the metamorphosis. Ugh. Eric sulks and walks over to a big box in the back of the room. Theo helps him move the box to center stage. Just get in the box. Fine, but you be quicker reappearing this time. I swear snails on tranquilizers are faster. Eric gets in a bag, then holds his hands out for Theo to handcuff his wrists. Theo helps Eric in the box and finally locks it. He gives it a good kick. Ready in there? Ready as ever. Ladies and gentlemen, you're witnessing the Brothers Houdini's one-of-a-kind metamorphosis. Right before your very eyes, you saw the famous Harry Houdini get handcuffed and put inside a double-knotted bag that is now under lock and key in this here trunk. For an average person, it's impossible to escape. But believe me when I tell you, in the blink of an eye, I will trade places with my brother. Nothing is impossible for the brothers Houdini. Theo stands on the box. In his hands, he holds a makeshift curtain, a sheet strung on a broom. He swings the curtain up and down in front of him to divert attention from what is behind him. He counts down. Three. Two. Eric appears behind the sheet, and Theo is gone. Voila! Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. But where is the better half of the Brothers Houdini? Eric unlocks the box. The lights change, and Bess emerges from the box. <laughs> Blackout. Chapter 3. Bess. We hear the voices of the interviewer and Eric. The stinky fox. Artful, huh? It was a long ride to get there, but slowly we got people's attention. And they loved us. I loved my dad. But I couldn't follow in his footsteps. So you left Appleton. I've always said the greatest escape was when we left Appleton. We just didn't see what was in our way. Or who. Scene 7. The dressing room of the Stinky Fox. Eric stands in front of a mirror preparing his speech. Mr. and Mrs. No. Mm. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, welcome. We are the one and only, um, I mean, two and only, uh, we are the Brothers Houdini. Yeah. Okay. Now prepare yourselves for utter, um, 
um, uh, amazement at the sheer magnificence, no magnificence of, of, oh. Theo peeks his head in through the door. Hey, ready? Uh, ready as ever. We start in two. Theo exits. Eric looks at the mirror again. He takes a big breath and heads to the stage. In the hallway, he bumps into Bess. Oh, I'm, I'm so sorry. My mistake. Bess recognizes Eric as Houdini. Oh my god, you're... Lost. <laughs> you're looking for the stage. Yes. It's this way. Um, I'm on after you. Eric doesn't know what to say. One of the floral sisters. I'm Bess. Hi. I'm very excited to share the stage with you tonight. Thea's come to get Eric. Oh, Theo. Hi, Bess. I hope to see you tonight. I, I had a great time last Friday. Oh, yes. <laughs> Want to join us for a drink after? Bess glances at Eric. I'd love to. Theo gives her a kiss on the cheek. All right, brother. Let's hit the stage. Scene 8. The brothers perform their famous revolving door trick. Eric and Theo circle the solitary door, presenting it as an ordinary door. After the door rotates a full circle, it stops. Now, everything is shown from behind the scenes. The brothers open a trap door to reveal the hidden gap where Bess is hiding. As they step in, Bess steps out. The door slowly begins to spin again. Much to the audience's shock, when the door opens, Bess emerges to take the stage with the Floral Sisters. the docks without a key. Steady as an ox, sneaky as a fox. You can set your clocks, just wait, wait and see. Sing something you can reach yeah. Watch us break the heaviest chains. Oh, ready for a shock, now we're gonna rock. Time is ticking duck, we've got, got to, to be free. change backstage, Bess is very excited. She's peeping over the curtain to see the audience. Oh my god! What's up? What are you looking at? <sighs> Houdini's here! What? Houdini? Who is that? Holy crap! Oh yes! What, Bess? Don't stress! He's sitting at table 409! With sparkling wine! No, that's his assistant! He's mine! That's fine! fine. My dress. What's your favorite novel? Girl, no way. Give it off and us. Hey, my name is Ben. Hey. Mind if I undress you? Oh, yes, okay. Are you on the star of the show? Got that straight up diva queen flow. Hold your head up high. Well, look him in the eye. If you don't, then I will give, give it a try. All right, I'll do it. I could see a life with you.
The Floral Sisters fade into silhouette in slow motion. Lights up on Theo and Eric at their table watching the show. That's her, Eric. Her? Yes. The beautiful Bess. That's her. Flash forward, short blackout, like a blink. A few minutes later, Bess approaches Eric and Theo at the bar. Um, she's coming. What? Um, pretend I said something funny. Um, talk about things. <laughs> oh. Things? <laughs> we are talking about things. Theo becomes nervous and accidentally spills the whole drink on himself. Are you kidding me? Excuse me? I mean, uh, enchanté. Well, how long's a lady supposed to wait? Sorry, uh, uh, I was just about to say hi. <laughs> hi. Oh, uh, this is my brother, the great Harry Houdini. I know. <laughs> we met briefly in the hallway. Oh, that's right. You were amazing tonight. <clears throat> I mean... Great number. Thanks. Yeah, we, we, we were just talking about our tour around Houdini. the- Houdini. That's not your stage name, right? The Brothers Houdini. Only a very few people know my offstage name. Oh. I wonder if I'll be one of the lucky few then. What? What? Bess indicates to Theo that she wants to take his chair and sit down. You know, I've been following your career since your first show. I'd love to know your tricks. I can't talk about them. My manager would kill me. <laughs> Your manager? <laughs> Since when? Uh, I'll grab some drinks. Uh, okay. Theo exits, reluctantly. Mm. What can you talk about then? You know my brother likes you. A lot. Is there a Mrs. Harry Houdini? <laughs> um, n no, I'm too busy for a... Why do you ask? I know it sounds insane But I have to tell you about the spell you have been casting on my brain Oh, by the way, I noticed how your jaw was on the floor Yeah, to yawn Oh, really? You're jeweling as we speak, so what you waiting for? What? No, I'm not I'm accepting applications, see my manager outside Oh, for what? A candidate for a partner but can you keep up with my stride? Well, grab a number, get in line, cause it wraps around yeah, the block. Right. Well, it seems pretty quiet here to me. Are those girls off the clock? <laughs> Look, this is not a game. We can drop the act. I know you feel the same. And to be exact, partners in crime, we'd have it all. We would plot and we'd scheme. We'd be unstoppable. Debating? I'm not arguing with that. Well, then what you waiting for? Most girls aren't this expressive. Oh, well, what's so wrong with that? With nothing. You're a bit progressive. Uh, you mean impressive. You I can, can match, match me tit, tit for tat. tat. <gasps> Jinx! This is something different than I've ever felt before. Something different is just what I've been searching for. This is not a game I should drop the ass. In the following, we see a montage of Bess and Eric falling in love through a series of dates which take them from rooftops to sunsets to the Coney Island boardwalk. I've never shied away from anything I need. Can't deny what I believe. I can't blame you for your persistence. Even I could not resist this. Kiss me quick before you make me oh, sick. Please. God, you're such a tease All right, I admit you were right I knew that I was right about tonight There's something in you Continue You're perfect for me I could give this a chance You sure know how to romance What if I said I'm the lock and you're the key? Better, huh? This is not a game, so, so let's, let's drop the act. I know we feel the same, and, 
and to be exact. Eric and Bess kiss. Theo enters and sees them. Partners in crime will have it all. We will plot and we'll scheme. We'll be unstoppable. If we were a team. Theo tries to brush off his jealousy. He decides to cut his losses and exits. Blackout. Scene 9. Eric and Bess stroll along the beach in Coney Island. Okay, name three of your favorite attractions on Coney Island. Go. Easy. Switchback Railway, Mm -hmm. Elephantine Colossus, and the Floral Sisters. Okay. I must say, excellent choices. How about the Brothers Houdini? Have you seen them at the Stinky Fox? I've heard they're quite good. Oh, don't believe everything you hear. They're not quite good. They're phenomenal. (laughs) That's right. (laughs) I saw them too. Mm. Once, I even crossed paths with Harry Houdini in the hallway. You know, he's got this incredible presence on stage, but Mm. he seemed pretty shy one-on-one. Maybe you intimidated him. I liked him right away. Man, I know it's only been two weeks, but... What? It's crazy. Like, in the midst of all the illusions and mystification in my life... (laughs) When I look at you, I can see what's true and real. It's like you're my reality. Hmm, so it's not just my pretty face, huh? Well, that helps too. (laughs) (laughs) Do you hear the song that man's playing? It's my favorite tune. Disappear on me, Eric. Promise? I want you by my side always. Forever. Bess? Eric? How will we get get married? married? Wait. (laughs) Really? (laughs) What do you want? Yes. Uh, Bess, we're going (gasps) to be unstoppable. I love you, Eric. fortune teller sits at a soothsayer's table and calls out a riddle on Bess and Eric. There's a map etched into the palm of your hands that only a skilled cartographer can read. Your life is written just past your sleeve. Let's see where it will lead. Let's read between the lines. Eric turns towards the fortune teller. He is intrigued. What? Really? Aren't you interested in the future? Could be fun. You're full of surprises. You believe in this? There's only one way to find out. Don't you want to know how many kids we'll have? Did you just say kids? Eric approaches the table and sits down. As soon as he does, the fortune teller grabs his hand, and without looking up, she starts reading his palm. selfish in love which may tear it apart have you suffered the loss of a lover or parent your emotional trauma is truly transparent let's read between the lines 
Bess jerks her head, trying to signal him to leave the table, but he's mesmerized. This light here is incredibly rare. I call it the fate marker. You're destined for greatness, it seems, but beware. The price is high. The Success, this ambition, however, you'll come to despise. For it's this very thing which brings you to the highs. Let's read between the lines. Have a nice day. Bess grabs Eric and drags him away. What just happened? You didn't see me. See you? You didn't pick up on my signals to leave. Signals? Uh, what signals? Uh, men. I wish we had a secret way to communicate, like a code or something. A code? Like how? I was just joking. No, 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 no. Continue. You just gave me an idea. Of course I did. Um, I could use words from Rosabelle, like... Maybe when we say tell, that means stop. Pray is listen. And answer means let's go. Bess, you're brilliant. Oh, we can communicate in secret right in front of the audience. We? Yes. We. They smile at each other. How about our special word? Something that means everything to us. Believe? Believe. Blackout. We hear the voices of the interviewer and Eric. I wonder, why the escape act? It wasn't just about the escape, but something much bigger. Scene 10. A full house in a large, ornate theater awaits Houdini's encore. For my lovely assistant, ladies and gentlemen, the one and only love of my life, my beautiful wife, Bess. Would you like an encore? What's going on? Just follow my lead. I know what I'm doing. But I don't. You've seen me busting out of straight jackets and making magic history. Breaking out of boxes, but there's so much more than this to me. I propose we raise the stakes, for one thing that escapes us is the thrill of mortal danger and the ways in which it shapes us. Rosie, sweet Rosabelle, remember our code. Pray look, pray tell. Eric ignores the 
the code. There's a fine line, like a sharp knife, carving boundaries between death and life. Maybe terrifying, but that line is what I prize. I know that I'd be lying if I said otherwise. Nothing's quite so satisfying as the drama it implies. I don't want to and gentlemen, step right up, because I need a volunteer. Come on and show me. You hands up. Is there anyone brave in here? You, madam, with the hat in the back, ready to make me face my fear. Your name. Добрый вечер, мистер Гудини. Меня зовут Марина Вишневская. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. My name is Marina Vishnevskaya. Ah, and where are you from? I'm from uh, Siberia. From Russia. Well, thanks for helping me with this. Here's what I'll need you to do. My wife will load the musket, please make sure she isn't cheating And hope that by the end of this I'm not severely bleeding Eric picks up a musket and hands it over to Bess Come on, hun. we don't have all day Stop it <laughs> She's afraid I'll lose my pretty little face Stop it Bess is frozen Here, let me help you Eric takes the musket and loads the ammo Then he hands it to the audience member you're going to shoot me in the face. Ready? This is dangerous, folks. Don't try this at home. Bess forces a smile through her tears. Eric starts walking away from the audience member. Gathering strength of heart and clarity of mind. Take a breath before we start. Let us hope that fate is kind. When the bullet leaves the gun, I'll catch it in my teeth. When I signal we be gone, pull the trigger underneath. Pray and tell. Eric! Oh Eric God. collapses. Eric struggles to his feet while choking or laughing. It's unclear which. What's going on? <laughs> Eric suddenly coughs up the bullet. He presents it to the audience and smiles. What's going on? Theo walks through the lobby of the theater and is approached by journalists. Look, it's Houdini's brother. How would you comment on his new dangerous act? Oh, please. It's so easy to get your attention. What if he suffers a fatal injury? Well, let's have some fun, shall we? Here and now, I, Hardeen, dare Harry Houdini to escape a tank full of water. <laughs> let's see how far he's willing to go. Write that. Eric and Bess are backstage. Bess is furious. She slaps him. What was that? Huh? 
Since when do you improvise? I, I gave our code to stop. I needed to liven up my act. Your act? I think you mean our act. And we never once practiced the bullet catch. Something could have gone horribly wrong. But it didn't. Oh, how reassuring. I agreed to do more dangerous tricks, but not to perform without practice. Bess, magic works best when the audience thinks I'm in the jaws of death. But I'm not the audience. I should be informed. Yes, but your authentic performance tonight was incredible. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What else are you planning that I'm not aware of? Nothing. Uh, I'm jumping off a bridge in the morning, but it's just practice. Oh, I, I thought you were going to say something shocking, like you forgot to buy milk or something, but no, you're just going to jump off a bridge and bury yourself alive? <laughs> no, 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 nothing to worry about. You're overprotective and it distracts me a lot. Do you know what I'm doing when you're performing? Keep my eyes glued to my feet on the ground Or close till I sneak a peek over the crowd Standing on the brink till you are back Safe and sound Till you are I can never, never, never look up Chapter 4, Martin Scene 11. Eric enters his dressing room, panicking. <sighs> ah! After he calms down, he removes his scarf from around his neck. It's bloody, all without noticing Martin Beck, a well-known talent agent who is sitting in Eric's chair, smoking a cigar and eating Eric's food. Martin seems impressed. A real bullet! Oh, God. 
Uh, who are you? <laughs> no, who are you, man? You're exactly what I'm looking for. You're insane. <laughs> I'm Martin Beck, apparently your biggest fan. Okay, what can I do for you? I'm here on business. Time is money, and my time is very valuable. So, you want to be my manager? I hear you're looking for a world tour. Go on. I can give you the real spotlight you've always dreamed of. You'll be an international star. Pack up, you start in two weeks. Ah, don't be ridiculous. That's impossible. Who plans a world tour in two weeks? (laughs) Who do you think I am? The tour is already arranged. I've been watching you, Houdini, and I had a premonition that you wouldn't reject my offer. You're a mind reader, too. What am I thinking right now? Ah, uh, you're thinking about which cities the tour would include, and yes, you can do more dangerous tricks. The riskier, the better. <laughs> well, I need to discuss it with my wife. Great to stand alone, without excuses. Come on now, Houdini, what's it going to be? An international tour for the one and only world's greatest illusionist, or Harry and his wife circuiting local dime museums. Imagine, if you will, a million dollar bill. You see that airplane taking off. Imagine it until you're in Rome, Berlin, or Paris, about to do a show. You're mingling with the stars, indulging in cigars. Well, that's how we do it on the road. And shock with your technique Cause that's how we do it on the road And then of course you know we be making money And raking in so much is not even a funny With half for you, the other for me We'll bust a vein With crazy amounts we'll make it rain And you can bet your ass We're traveling in first class The liquor's complimentary, so let's always blast Whether steamboat, horse, or carriage, or any other mode Been to that bar in forever. Many a long nights nice there. And wake up far away We're on a new adventure Your life's a holiday Imagine every evening You change your postal code A pizza pie you roll Where all roads lead you home Well that's how you do it On the road Take it away Louis I mention all the money. 
money. Money, 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 we're talking money. <laughs> it won't take long, so what do you say? Our we are team. Let's shake on it. No flaking on it. Live the dream. Your post for photographs while signing autographs. In every country's newspaper, they'll pen your paragraphs. When the crowds adore you, the world is your home. Scene 12. A foggy day at the Greenwood Cemetery in Brooklyn. A large group of people gather around a grave. The scene seems dreamlike and surreal. I think he's dead. There's two minutes left on the clock. I bought a ticket to watch him escape. And escape he will. <laughs> Somebody should dig him up already. Come on, Harry. Come on. Throughout the scene, we hear the voices of Eric and Theo as children playing hide-and-seek. Ah! Dash! Eric! You all right? I'm stuck! Get me out of here! I can't breathe! It's too deep! I'll go get help! No! Don't leave me alone! Come on! Think! Use your brain! You'll get out! Look it out. My brain is the key that sets me, me free. Eric unexpectedly bursts out of the coffin like a zombie. Oh, 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 oh ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> buried alive for over an hour, the longest in human history. Give it up for Harry Houdini. Eric screams ecstatically and struggles to catch his breath. Harry, what took you so long? <laughs> the crowd cheers, <laughs> but Eric is shaken. It wasn't supposed to be like that. Short blackout. Flash forward. Scene 13. Later that night in Eric's apartment. Oh, really? It wasn't supposed to be like that? Honey, I'm fine. Martin was there. And where was I? You're right. I should have let you know. Are you bleeding? You sure are taking more risks. Ah, eh, just a scratch. Bess, I have something to tell you. Martin offered us Houdini's first world tour. No, we're not going anywhere. Well, I already said yes. You didn't. Don't you get it? This is a chance to up our act. Two years in cities across the world. You signed up for two years without asking me. You take more risks, and for what exactly, Eric? To prove ordinary people can do extraordinary things. E extraordinary doesn't mean catching bullets in your teeth. Being a good husband and father is extraordinary. Do you ever consider that? Look, I have every lock and pick mechanism memorized with or without full cognitive function. And my muscle memory- Enough! You don't get sleep. You forget to eat. Your body's bound to give out. I- I-, I Pour can't. with me. Please, Bess. No. Why? Because I don't want you to die! You said I'm distracting you from focusing. I won't ask you to stay, but don't ask me to come either. I'll be here, waiting for Eric. Believe? Best exits. My whole life waiting How could I let this moment slip away There's a million things I'm doing Only so much time in a day And I can't afford a second to delay Most People live in cages Safe and warm from dangers all around So intending to protect you They tie you to the ground And your freedom dies in stages until
until one day it's nowhere to be found. Release me, the key to freedom's all in my mind. Believe me, there's no way I can be confined. Why should I apologize for reaching higher? Staying small to keep the status quo I'm a blazing ball of fire If it burns then you should go And I'm only getting started To close your eyes Cause this flame's about to grow Release me The key to freedom's all in my mind Something I define as striving to thrive instead of simply survive. I'm taking light, piercing the night. If it's darkest before the light, my future's clear. It's lonely here, but I will not be ruled by fear. Release me. Act One. Act Two. Scene 14. The faint sound of an accordion playing Parisian music drifts in from outside. A year later, Eric is on tour. He has locked himself in chains inside his dressing room. He is hung upside down, suspended from a bar, half naked, doing sit ups. Martin enters. So, I was thinking we stay in Paris a little longer before going to London, <laughs> like a vacation. <laughs> I don't need a vacation. Come on, you've been working your ass off. I'll rest when I'm dead. Martin grabs some crackers from the table. He sees Eric's six-pack. Oof, are those real? The risk is real. Martin paces around Eric like a personal trainer. Oh, yeah, and what are you going to do about it? I need the lungs of a whale <clears throat> and body of steel. That's right. And how's the audience going to feel about this body <sighs> of steel? They're never sure if they want me to win <clears throat> or lose. Every time Eric speaks, he's doing a sit-up, bringing him face to face with Martin. <laughs> are you going to chance that? No. Are you going to chance that? <clears throat> So dramatic, I love it. Bring in that money, Harry. Eric comes off the bar and wipes the sweat from his face. Uh, by the way, Harden's ticket sales are low. That bad? No. Issue a press release. Harry Houdini challenges Theo Hardeen to escape from a straitjacket in full view of an audience. He's good at it. On it. And Bess? Martin shakes his head. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry. All right, Martin. Get out. Okay, I'm leaving, but think about that vacation, will ya? Go see the Eiffel Tower. Can I get that cookie? Okay, bye. Martin opens the door, and the music of Paris takes over. Along on the sand, 
Sky Manacan, Parisian, Big Boulevard, City of Stars. If she breaks your heart, don't grieve, cause you'll never have to. Title the boat right under your feet. There, walk through the moonlight, look up a lot on Boulevard, and then see you fall apart. If you want the light and shade, you just take a sip, and the painted eyes tell the truth. enters the lobby of Martin's Hotel. Good morning, Harry baby. Didn't we have fun last night? <laughs> sure looks like you did. Now still a good time to me? Sure, but here's the lady I want you to meet. Your new assistant. Daisy, it's an honor to work with you. She's a hard worker, that's for sure. <laughs> sure I am, sir. Ready to work all day and night. Daisy attempts to give Eric an intimate kiss on the cheek. Eric recoils and exits quickly. My, that was the worst. Next time I'll try, unless I'm rehearsed. Houdini. Now I'm cursed. When his answer came, on my head in his shame, and to my dismay, he refused to Scene 15. In a small theater, Theo is performing his solo act for an intimate audience. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank. Theo notices oh. Bess waiting in the wings. 
All right, folks, tonight I have a very special guest, and a gentleman doesn't keep a lady waiting. Thanks, and uh, have a great night. He runs to Bess enthusiastically and hugs her. <laughs> Bess! Hi! <laughs> Thanks for coming out. Oh, of course. What a show. You should have done your encore. Yeah, I can I can do that any <laughs> night. But seeing you here just <laughs> makes my day. There is an awkward pause as Theo realizes what he blurted out. Um, uh, how are you? Uh, I'm, I'm good. I, you know, still singing out at Coney. You? <laughs> oh, you know, s- same old stuff. Taking care of mom. How's she doing? She doesn't want to worry Eric while he's touring. <laughs> Typical. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, have you heard from him lately? I, I, I try to keep up, but... Yeah. Last I heard, he was in Berlin. He's doing great. Oh, good, good. Why don't you go on tour? You know I'd love to, but my mom needs me close by. It's just... not the best time. That's... <laughs> yeah. Um, do you ever get lonely? Sometimes. Does anything help? One thing. What is it? Miss Houdini, a word please. Oh, one moment. It's you, Bess. I've been frozen in time every single day since I first saw your face. I couldn't help it, I was stuck, I was blown away, didn't know what to say. Like a half-written book sitting on the shelf I can't bear to erase All this time I have tried to deny it to myself But I'm asking in case If this isn't meant to be Tell me why you do to me what you do to me Would you disagree? I could search the world through and through I don't see what good it would do I could have some magic show Wouldn't matter though All that matters is you around who's here who's the one by your side i'm no genius i'm no star just a simple guy who can't stand to see you cry no you're a miracle to me got me mesmerized you're the highest of highs if i only had one wish well i think you'd know you're the ultimate prize you take a chance on me I will always stand with you Hand in hand with you I swear this much is true I could search the world through and through I don't see what good it would do I could have some magic show Wouldn't matter though All that matters is Bess returns and Theo kisses her. I, I'm sorry, Theo. I can't. Bess pulls away and hurries out. Blackout. Flash forward. Scene 16. A month later. Eric is wrapping up his public speech at a podium. What the eyes see and the ears hear, the mind believes. I need explanations. I don't believe in ivory towers. Never claimed that I had any supernatural powers. I want to believe in the afterlife like any of you, but the precedence of no evidence just doesn't make it true. 
This so-called psychic, fake, clairvoyant is nothing but a ruse. But I see right through, and I'll tell it too. So write it in the news. Nothing will stop the great Harry Houdini! Eric leaves the podium and recognizes Theo in the crowd. Theo, why didn't you tell me you were in town? God, you look great. Theo reluctantly hugs his brother. I need to talk to you. I know. I I should have been there for Mom. And you. I heard you tried to connect with her recently. Oh, that spiritualist. Another fraud. Listen, there's something else. There's so much to talk about. Do you want to... I kissed Bess. What? I... uh... It was a mistake. I was just... A mistake? You kissed my wife? I liked her first, remember? Liked? I- I'm married to her. Look, it's been a tough time for me, and I-, I was taking care of Mom, and I was all alone. I know it's wrong, but... You betrayed me. No. I... I needed you. But you weren't there. You don't even see it, but you've changed. This is not you. I miss Eric. I miss my brother. I can't even look at you. Eric storms out. Theo turns to follow him, but a mysterious woman blocks his path. Mr. Hardeen, may I have a word? Blackout. Scene 17. Nighttime. In the dressing room of the Palladium Theater, Eric regards himself in the mirror before a performance. Will I one day wonder why I Let my whole life just pass me by Each day to find death While my wife tries to be strong And wasting all my breath Just to prove somebody wrong When I look back then Will I find that I've been stubborn all along No time for regrets I've placed all my bets On that one-way ticket Martin enters. He's very excited. How's my champ? Huh? Listen, ticket sales are through the roof. (laughs) Your Chinese water thingy drives people nuts. There's not even standing room left. I need a break. Like now. We sold the show for months. Look, I know you're going through a lot with your family, but you're on top of the world. Don't stop now. My family needs Eric. But people want Houdini! He's their hero. Suck it up. The show must go on. You're right. Are we going to make history tonight? Yes. Are we going to make history tonight? Yes! That's my boy. See you later. Martin exits when a seemingly starstruck fan bursts into Eric's room. Mr. Houdini, may I have an autograph? And your name, sir? Gordon Crow. Eric signs the playbill. There you go. I'm so excited about the show tonight, sir. History will remember this night. Do I know you? Is it true that you can withstand any blow to your stomach? With the proper concentration... (sighs) With no warning, the man punches him in the stomach multiple times and Eric collapses. Blackout. We hear the voices of the interviewer and Eric. What is delusion? It's like a mirage. You actually believe it exists until you hit rock bottom. Chapter 6 Cecilia Scene 18 Flashback Appleton, Wisconsin, 1892 At the Weiss family's small, poorly furnished apartment Eric, who has been practicing hard, suddenly twists his ankle Ah! (laughs) Oh, that hurt Cecilia rushes in Eric! Are you all right? I'm fine, Mom. I just fell off the bar. Let me see. I need to find a better trick. It's not good enough. Every week you get new wounds. You should take a break. Here. I have something for you. 
Cecilia opens the drawer and produces a wooden box. I wanted to wait until your birthday, but uh, let's see if you can unlock it. Your box? Happy birthday, hon. Cecilia caresses Eric's face. Listen, you are old enough now to understand how important this is. Your grandmother gave it to me. One of the few things I carried with me when we left Hungary. Ever since, this box has held all of my most treasured things. <laughs> Letters, postcards, <laughs> precious memories. It helps me escape to the past, to our country and our family. Now it's yours to continue to fill with your legacy. Thanks, Mom. Uh, this means the world to me. Young Theo enters. Whoa! What's this? Theo reaches out to touch it. Young Eric pulls it away quickly. Careful! Theo, I have something for you, too. Cecilia opens the drawer, reaches in, and produces a Chinese finger trap. She hands it to Theo. What's this? A Chinese finger trap? So how does it work? Oh, uh, I'm... I, I'm stuck! Theo jams both index fingers in the trap and tries to pull them out. All right, just keep calm. Concentrate. Eric helps him escape the finger trap. Seeing you two working together is a mother's dream. Keep trying, boys. And if you do nothing else, do this one thing for me. Never give up on each other. Both times I was expecting I was mystified I knew I was growing Miracles inside You'd kick so much I'd whisper Are you plotting your escape? When I saw you in your blanket It looked like a mini wizard cake And when you met each other The both of you lit up Always stick together As you grow up. Theo and Eric eagerly run out with their presents in tow. Flash forward. Scene 19. Many years later, Eric enters his apartment to find Cecilia sitting at the table waiting for him. Mom? Hi. Oh, what a great surprise. What are you doing here? My love. I was in the neighborhood. <laughs> Give me a big hug. <laughs> you lost weight. I'm sorry, Mom. I, I don't have much time. I, I just was dropping home to grab some leftovers. You just arrived. You certainly have five minutes for your mother. Sit for a second. Sit. Eric kisses his mother on the forehead. I want to, but I, I need to practice for tonight. Rain check. Have you talked to your brother? Um, not since November. Sometimes I miss Theo. And how is Bess? Oh, Bess is fine. She worries about everything. You married each other. You made your bed. Now you lie in it together and work it out. Mom, I'd, I'd love to spend the afternoon with you, but I gotta go. You are always too busy. I, um... I wanted to talk to you about something. But maybe another time. Are you being safe? I am meticulous. Tonight's a big night. I'm premiering a new stunt, the bullet catch, with a real bullet. Do you want to come? I can get you the best seat in the house. Oh, I don't think I can watch you risk your life on stage. But it's good to see you are happy. Are you? I really have to go. When will you visit me again? I miss you. We all miss you. Um, how about next month? I, I promise. Really? You said that three months ago. Once I'm done with this round, I'll have all the time for you. I just need to finish this, okay? It's, it's really important to me. I know. We can go anywhere you want. I I'll take you to London for a few days. I can't wait. Oh, d do you need money, Mom? I can send you more. I don't need more money. But I will take another hug. Hmm. He darts back to give her a quick hug, when suddenly there is a knock on the door. Eric seems confused as he isn't expecting anyone. When he gets to the door, a telegram is waiting for him. 
The lights change. Flash forward. He opens and reads the message. We're sorry to inform you that last night Celia Weiss... Eric looks at his mother with apprehension. She smiles apologetically, and her visage fades away. Mom? Mom. Eric sinks to the floor. Cecilia is gone. No. What is this? Can it be? Are these letters that I'm reading Just ink on paper Words without a meaning It happened just last night It can't be I would have felt it There must be some major mistake Somebody help Wake me up Before I break The postcards you had The gifts you would send All the days I promised you we'd spend Did you think of them When you came to the end? My life has passed me by The price was far too high I thought I believed I had more time And now I'm trapped inside my mind Could I go back and hold the hand I left behind? Would you forgive me? I was blind Look, I'm sorry Visions of your face Floating out to space Memories slowly parting Well, how do I stop them starting To fade away The plans we made yesterday Turning to rust Burning to dust Waiting for some day oh, What am I doing here? I stare at the mirror and all I can see are your eyes Wondering if your son will ever be Son and this big shot. But all I've done is escape everyone. Now, what have I got? My life has passed me by. The price was far too high. I thought, I believed, I had more time, and now I'm trapped. Inside my mind, could I go back and hold the hand I left behind? Would you forgive me? I was blind. I'm sorry. Like you always said, I have made my bed. Seems there's no escaping When your own heart is breaking Wild and all alone Bess enters and embraces him. Eric! Bess? Oh, I'm sorry. I am so sorry. I missed you so much. I lost touch with reality. We shouldn't have parted. Ever. But I'm here now. Believe? Believe. I came as soon as I could. Thea was delaying the funeral until you come home. I'm putting the rest of the tour on hold. We leave tonight. All right. Bess hands Eric a letter. Oh. Theo gave me something for you. 
A note from your mom. I, I, I can't. Can you read it for me? Of course. Eric, happy birthday, dear boy. You know I'd never miss it. You've made me so very proud. Love, Mom. I just wish I could talk to her one last time. If anyone could, it'd be you. Daisy enters the room abruptly. Hey, Harry, that big lock you gave me, I... Oh, hi, ma'am. Who are you? Blackout. Chapter 7 Daisy and Gordon Scene 20 A few months earlier in Eric's workshop on tour Eric kneels over the floor feverishly sketching ideas on a notepad Daisy sneaks in and pops up behind him taking him by surprise (laughs) Daisy, how did you get in here? Eric throws the blueprints into his wooden box I'm not the escape artist. (laughs) The door was open. Well, do you need something? I'm busy. What are you working on? It's a combination of the straight jacket and milk can escape. Theo gave me the idea. I think it's going to be my best yet. Imagine the great Harry Houdini submerged in water upside down. But this time, I'll actually have to hold my breath. It's the most dangerous and innovative escape this world will ever know. It'll be called the Chinese Water Torture Cell. (gasps) Harry, let's celebrate. (laughs) Daisy, I, I don't... She guides his hands to her chest. Sit and listen for a minute. I know it sounds insane, but I have to tell you about the spell you have been casting on my brain. Now I'm not always quite so forward, but I can't seem to ignore. And I write, well, usually I'm right, so what you waiting for? Feel my heartbeat generate in heat drum and steadily. But a little boom up, chicka boom up, chicka boom up, be enough for me. Oh, it's a win win situation, what are we debating for? Well, I'm free, today's your lucky day, so what you waiting for? You can drop the act I know you feel the same And to be exact Partners in crime, we'd have it all We would plot and we'd scheme We'd be unstoppable If we were a team Blackout, scene 21 Flash forward In the wake of Cecilia's death Bess is comforting Eric in his dressing room. Daisy enters the room abruptly. Hey, Harry, that big lock you gave me, I... Oh, hi, ma'am. Who are you? Oh, hi, dear. I'm Bess, Eric's wife. Eric? (laughs) Yes, Eric, dear. (laughs) Bess caresses Eric's face and looks at Daisy. Thanks for all your hard work, but... The Houdinis won't be needing you anymore. I'll be assisting him now. Thank you. Wait till Martin hears about this. Daisy storms out. On her way out, she crosses Gordon Crow, the man we recognize as the fan who will punch Eric in his dressing room. Hey, aren't you Daisy? The Daisy Houdini's assistant? I was, and so much more. Who are you? An admirer of yours. Keep going. I'm working for the Daily Mirror and was wondering if you could give me the inside scoop on Houdini. (laughs) I know damn near everything about him. I was basically his therapist. You know, you really shouldn't piss off your therapist. She lights a cigarette. Therapists do a hell of a lot of listening, but who listens to me? I could listen to you all day. What was your name again? Gordon Crow. Chapter 8. Mina Marjorie Crandon. 
We are the voices of the interviewer and Eric. Do you believe in life after death? I want to, truly. But I need proof. I'm a scientist. Scene 22. A few weeks later in the home of Mina Marjorie Crandon, a famed spiritualist and self-described psychic. Several journalists sit in the room with Martin, waiting impatiently for the Houdinis to arrive. They're on the way, I'm sure of it. Uh, uh, can we just take one quick photo for the press? Uh, uh, Mina, uh, move over closer. Uh, smile. Uh, oh, uh, or don't. <laughs> yeah, don't. Oh, my God. Mr. Beck. It's been 30 minutes. I'm not used to waiting, even for big celebrities such as who de- Sorry we're late. It's a big day. Eric and Bess enter. Of course it is. Happy birthday, Mr. Weiss. Huh. How'd you know? I sense the universe. I know all. All? Or nothing? Eric, you wanted to try and we're already here. Let's do this. Believe? Believe. Everybody be quiet and be seated. Bess, Martin, Mina, and Eric sit down at the table. Hold each other's hands. Mina's breathing slows down as she goes into a trance. Cecilia. Don't be afraid. Come to us now. Your son, Eric, would like to talk to you. If you are among us, show us a sign. (sighs) Eric. Mom? I've been waiting. I knew you'd find a way. I've been trying to contact you. Is this really you? Eric. Oh, I'm sorry I wasn't there for you, Mom. I think of you every day. Oh, I'm happy to hear that. Gordon Crow appears from the shadow and approaches Mina. He puts his hand on Mina's shoulder with an air of familiarity. I miss you so much. <laughs> and I even miss our life in Wyoming. Oi, you mean Wisconsin, honey. Yes, sorry, Wisconsin. Eating the same meal every night? (sighs) Potato stew. Yes, potato stew. Oh, I even missed that. Mom, is it really you? Of course, honey. Well, would you have thought that the king of dice would become such a big escape artist? I always believed in you. And your father did too. Huh. You remember the day when you gave me that wooden box? Of course I remember. Well, that day was so special. One you'd never forget. Yes, very special. Uh, What day was it? I love you, son. I have to go now. No, don't go yet. (gasps) Say it. What day was it? Say it. Excuse me? Wow. (laughs) You almost got me. (laughs) Bess, let's go. We're done. What? Wrong. Eric, don't. My mother gave me that box on my birthday. Today, so many years ago, she would never have forgotten. You even knew today was my birthday. You honestly think my mom wouldn't have said happy birthday to her own son? And my father? (laughs) Proud? Hard to believe. Oh, and uh, by the way, I was the king of cards, not dice, you fraud. Scene 23. The stage transforms into a big platform where Eric speaks to a large audience from a podium. Mr. Houdini, how do you want the world to remember you? I'm trying to inspire all the future generations to see the possibilities and push their limitations. Limitations! Let our illusions never settle. Never. Stop questioning the messaging they're getting from the passionately in public against spiritualists. What the eyes see and the ears hear, the mind believes. 
sleeves And I know she's pulling the wool Playing her fear, she deceives Rods with tricks, getting kicks Playing you all for dopes Cashing in on your sorrows Capitalizing on your hopes Loving's what it seems But aren't illusions tricks too? What makes you different from them? I don't take advantage and I've never been a cheat I'm a man of science, everything I do is concrete Concrete! I need explanations, don't believe in ivory towers Never claim that I had any supernatural powers I want to believe in the afterlife like any of you But the precedence of no evidence just doesn't make it true so-called psychic big clairvoyant Is nothing but a rose And I see right through And I'll tell it to So write it in the news Write it in the news This charlatan has gone too far And no matter what it takes I'll expose them till everyone knows They'll pay for their mistakes Make no mistake This movement's going down We'll see about that. Eric leaves the podium and recognizes Theo in the crowd. Theo? Why didn't you tell me you were in town? God, you look great. Flash forward a few minutes later. You betrayed me. No, I, I needed you, but you weren't there. You don't even see it, but you've changed. This is not you. I miss Eric. I miss my brother. I can't even look at you. Eric storms out. Theo turns to follow him, but a mysterious woman blocks his path. It is Mina Crandon. Mr. Hardy. May I have a word? No. Theo dodges Mina. I saw your show. You're remarkable. Unlike anything I've ever seen. You must be talking about the great Houdini. No. Hardeen. The Theo Hardeen. And you are... Mina. Marjorie. Crandon. The one who talked to my mom? Oh, what a wonderful woman. She spoke to me. And I know you deserve much more. Don't you think, Theo? We can help each other. So you're a manager, too? (laughs) (laughs) Uh, I manage things to happen the way I need them to. At first, I was just Mina Crandon, but now it's Marjorie. Both my fans and my critics have started to call me the blonde witch of Lime Street. So trick or treat, (laughs) you'll find that I'm changing lives and giving good advice to everyone I meet. So there are people who do anything to see what I see. I gotta go. Mr. Hardeen, stop. I'm not finished yet. My brother, Walter, was dead and gone. A train tore him limb from limb. As you may know long ago, during one seance, I was visited by him. The lights got dim. A voice from inside me suddenly appeared to guide me with an ectoplasmic hand. Walter, you That's gross. Why are you telling me this? I know what it's like to have a brother taunting you. And how it feels when your own brother haunts you. Men say I am too attractive for my own good. And if we work together to teach him a lesson, we might be understood. 
have one big obstacle in our lives. Your brother sabotaged my act. So help me sabotage his, and you'll have no competition in this business. Don't you want to take back what's yours? You listen real good. If you ever do anything that hurts him, you'll regret it. Am I clear? <laughs> good day. With or without you, I'll get my revenge. Calling me a fraud And it's sickening having to sit by in silence While watching him play God ha! Like he's not flawed He's taunting me like a witch Oh, that son of a bitch Let me tell you what I mean A curse will follow him for all his days Until he sees his life burn down in hell blaze Houdini Chapter 9 Finale Scene 24 In darkness, we hear the distant voices of Gordon Crow and Eric. Is it true that you can withstand any blow to your stomach? With the proper concentration... Oh! <laughs> the sound of Gordon punching Eric in the stomach multiple times. Eric faints and slips into a dreamlike state. The image of Theo takes shape in his mind. We hear the voices of Theo and Eric. Theo, where am I? At your door. My door? A place where you still have a choice. Of what? Of any life you want. I do? Brother, it's still not too late. You always have a choice. Back to reality. Lights up in Eric's dressing room. Martin is trying to revive him. Harry! 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 Can you hear me? Uh, come on, big guy. Theo! I'm sorry. What, what, what happened? Some lunatic hit you in the gut and you fainted. This doctor's going to look. No, it's okay. I'm fine. Eric tries to stand up, but is stopped by a sharp, stabbing pain in his stomach. Ooh. This is strange. Do you feel any pain when I touch you here? <laughs> That's not good. Really? It, it was just a punch? No, Mr. Beck. My guess is either appendicitis or a cracked abdominal wall. He needs to get to the hospital immediately. No. No. I have a show tonight. Bess is out there entertaining the crowd now. We can postpone it, Harry. No. Oh, it's, uh... <clears throat> it's not that bad. Just give me morphine. I'm doing the show tonight. You hear that? You hear the crowd? I'm doing it. I can't let you perform. Martin, you told me greatness stands alone without excuses. You told me, and I believe you. I, I, I don't know. Please. You better come out alive from that stupid tank. All right. Clear the room. You can't be serious. Martin forces a reassuring look, and he exits with the doctor. Eric sits down at his dressing table and regards himself in the mirror for a moment, wincing in pain. In the meantime, we hear Harry Houdini's announcement on stage. Ladies and gentlemen, I take great pleasure in introducing my latest invention, the water torture cell. Although there is nothing supernatural about it, I am willing to forfeit the sum of $1,000 to anyone who can prove that it is possible to obtain air inside of the torture cell when I'm locked up in it. In the regulation manner, after it has been filled with water. Eric, still
still sitting in his dressing room, picks up a pen and starts writing a letter. My dearest Theo, with no regrets, just like we promised, we made our bets. At times we would miss, but that's how we played it. That's how we made it. If I'm in your debt, I hope I have paid it. Days without you seem to go slower. I never knew till I was alone. All of these places, people were faceless, but I was never on my own. We've always been <laughs> better together Trying to win a whole world for two Dreaming and chasing, scheming and racing We never back down from what we were facing You look at me like I was a hero And now I see I was so scared to be I'd stay beside you, wanting to guide you, but it was you who guided me. Now, here's what I expect you to do. Stand up and face reality. Nothing is permanent, but I can say you will always have a part of me with no regrets when my time is over you'll carry on long after I'm gone I have to leave now try to believe how I love you please don't forget you are the source of my pride and I'll always be here by your side should anything go wrong when I one of my assistants walks through the curtain, ready to rush in, demolishing the glass, allowing the water to flow out in order to save my life. Harry Houdini, October the 29th. Two male assistants handcuff and chain Houdini for the highly anticipated Chinese water torture cell stunt. As they walk him toward the tank, Eric collapses in pain but indicates he's fine. His assistants help him up and continue walking him, but he collapses a second time. Eric struggles to his feet and finally climbs the stairs to the tank. He takes a big breath, glances at Bess in the wings, and finally steps into the tank. The assistants lock the lid and cover the tank with the curtain. The clock ticks excruciatingly as the audience waits with bated breath. Two emergency stagehands hover near the tank, holding axes. Bess's anxiety grows with each moment that stretches beyond Eric's anticipated escape time. She signals frantically to his assistants. They remove the curtain to reveal Houdini struggling in the water, clinging to life.
Theo runs to Martin. The assistants smash their axes against the massive tank, shattering the glass. Water floods the stage. Bess runs to Eric, who lies motionless and drenched. Scene 26. Later at Grace Hospital, Bess and Theo are impatiently pacing in the hallway, waiting for the surgeon. Nothing's what it seems. Life is made of dreams. Confusing our illusions for our reality. The doctor appears to deliver the news. What price would you pay? To see clearly for a day Take everything you think you'd know And throw it away Bess collapses Theo punches the wall Martin is frozen in shock Scene 27 Theo approaches Eric's room to pay his respects When Theo opens the door, the lights change Flashback to the day when the brothers Houdini broke up. Eric is lying on the table in their apartment. There's a moment of tension, but then they both laugh. <laughs> you are a terrific actor, Theo. <laughs> is she replacing me? <laughs> Am I not good enough for you? Theo, start making a scene. Then I quit. <laughs> Did you see the look on those journalists' faces? <sighs> Did I? <sighs> I just hate that mom can't know. Theo, you had a genius idea. But it has to be our secret, a lifelong illusion. And Bess can't know either. The press will go crazy. I hope we won't regret this. I can see the headlines now. The Brothers Houdini split for good. What's next for the Brothers of Magic? <laughs> Just think of the fame we're gonna have. Theo Hardeen and Harry Houdini, the best brothers take on the magic world, separate. But together, <laughs> are you ready? <laughs> ready as ever. Where are you headed now? I promised Mom I'd meet up with her. See you later. Eric exits. Theo runs to the door to follow Eric. When he opens it, Bess is standing there alone, wearing all black. She holds a wooden box. Back to the present. Bess? Are you okay? I don't know. May I come in? Of course, yeah, please. Um, I just... He left you something in his dressing room. I know it was important to him. Here. Bess hands him the box. Theo takes out a letter and other items from the box. I always wondered what secrets he kept in here. The blueprints sketches lock mechanisms I expected, but there's so much more. Look. Theo takes out a few photographs and shows them to Bess. The day of our first performance on Coney Island. Oh. Wow. He was so anxious, he was practicing his speech for a whole week. Oh, and that's the three of us. Ooh, that was an interesting haircut. <laughs> Here's Mom at the lake. Yeah, that was right before you fell in. Mm -hmm. I remember that swimsuit. <laughs> Wait, oh, is he flexing his muscles? <laughs> of course he is. <laughs> I can't believe he's gone. He's not. He's not. It's... It's all in here. Who decided to death do us part? We can fight it, it's only the start. Miracles live inside of your soul. Twenty-one grams are all that make you Suddenly, a bright light bursts forth from the box. Every wall becomes filled with images of the Weiss family and of Harry Houdini's famous stunts. Bye.
You sacrificed everything for your dream. Some people find that inspiring, but it's also heartbreaking. I mean, you spent your whole life dancing with death. We can die anytime. The question is how you use the time you have been given. When death comes, don't we all want to know that we've left something valuable behind? Which is? A life lived fearlessly with passion, dedication, and excellence. Earlier, you talked about the three types of death. You said the third is the one that scares you the most. The third death is the last time anyone ever utters your name. The memory of you in the minds of others gone. Forever. One last question. Now that you're dead, how would you summarize your life in one word? Believe.